Here we're going to change out a four horsepower pump from Beachcomber. This is out of a Beachcomber hot tub. So the discharge is a two inch and the front here is a two and a half inch. And normally their sticker says four horsepower right here. Just in case you need a new impeller. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to need a new impeller or not, but today we're going to change out the seal and the bearing as you could hear. So we got to change that bearing out for sure. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this front plate, take off all the screws right here. After you get all the screws off, keep them all together. Don't lose any, don't get any dirt on it. So we're going to have to try to get this off. If you can't get it off with your hand like that, then we're going to get a screwdriver. Screwdriver, we're going to put on an angle right next where the crack is. Just use something, bang it. And just turn it. So if it's really tough, try to get in where the screws went in because there's a little bit more meat there. Remember how everything goes when you're taking this apart. Okay? So here, take a picture of it if you have to. Now here I know that there's a, a nipple I took off. So that's right on the bottom. And discharge is straight up and down. Now this fell out, so how that sits in there, it sits in there like that. I'm going to clean that all up. So it sits on your impeller. And what this does is there's a little space. If you just took this out and then put the front back on, there's a little tiny space in between. So this floats in there like that. Sometimes you can hear that the whistling noise of it sometimes. Sometimes if these break, and they do break once in a while, You'll hear it crackling and cricking because all the pieces are flying around and so on the outside here. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this impeller off. So we're going to try first, because I like to keep everything all together. I'm going to try first, I'm going to try to hold the back with the large screwdriver. Now there's an opening in the back, if you have one. Now if you don't have one, you're going to have to watch one of our other videos and you can take this whole piece right out and last your fan your motor fan in here if it's metal you could put a screwdriver right in there and hold that fan from spinning if it's plastic you want to break any of those so we're going to try first we're going to try to hold the shaft in the back now i got the piece off sometimes they're plastic sometimes there's nothing you can't even get to it so like i said don't fork if it looks like there's nothing there Sometimes you get a plate and it looks like you can pop it off and I know people have trying to take it off but they don't come off. So you hold the back and try to twist it off counterclockwise. Yeah, I can't do it. So that's your first choice. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to take the four screws off. There's two here and then two on the bottom. We're going to take those off. And once you got the screws undone, don't don't pull these off all the way out. Just leave it there. Just pull them out a little bit, but don't all, not all the way. So the next thing you're going to do is we're going to take the screwdriver, and where you try to hold it with the screwdriver, we're just going to get it in there, and then we're going to bang the end of it. We're just going to bang the end of it to try to move this forward, because this will come at uh, this body here will will move away from here. Okay, once you got that popped out slightly, bring it out. Just be careful. Pop out. So when it comes out, look on the end of it. And normally there's a little, there's a ring. It's like a compression ring. Sometimes it gets stuck on there. So we're going to clean that off, but re-grease re it. And then you're going to have to look inside to see if that compression ring's there. Okay, it's there. Sometimes it falls back down. Or come, like I said, when it comes with it, we need grease back on it. So we're going to clean that off and then re-grease it. And as you're doing that, you just check it. You can feel it if you have to replace this one. Very rare that I've ever replaced the back one. And that's why we, 
That's why you regrease that too. Keep some moisture away. See, this is what I mean about some of the fans. See, we could have put a screwdriver in there and undid it with here. But I'm trying not to break the impeller. But we could have put it in here because it's not plastic. So we're gonna hold the shaft here. So we have to grab a tool to grab the here and then take the impeller off. So we're gonna go counterclockwise. Now I have a feeling this one's gonna this one's gonna break. So we got that off, but we'll see what the shaft is. If it's cracked or not. Yeah. So we need to get a new impeller. Okay, so whenever you see a hairline crack like that, sometimes this is melted right to the shaft. But once that breaks apart, you just can't put it back together. So you need a new one. So this is a waterway. So we know it's a four horsepower because it's right on the wet head. So this is a four horsepower and all the codes are right on it. You can see them right on all the way around. It'll say two horsepower, three horsepower, so on, so on. Now, here's the code right here if you need it. It's so like a one or a three one zero four one nine nine or nine zero, something like that. But if you need the impeller, just it's right here. That's the code. But we're going to put a new impeller in. Once you get that out, make sure you take, we're going to do the bearing too on this because it's pretty, you can feel it. Yeah, it's pretty gritty. So on this one here, there's a screw we got to undo. So you don't have to unscrew it. There's a little thing in there. It just moves out of the way because this holds the bearing right there. It'll turn as you turn it. See? So when you tighten, it goes back. The pin goes back down. So you just want to keep it up so it's up. Then we can take this part off. So you don't break this, try not to break it anyway. Sometimes you can bang it off, but I think this one, we're gonna try it, but I don't wanna, I don't wanna break it. But you, you don't bang hard. Yeah, that's, normally that works. Sometimes you can put two pieces of wood on either side, so it's suspended like that, and you can bang this. But the problem is, you can use a piece of wood. Sometimes these get chipped up, and then you have to re-thread all this. So I'm trying to do it in a way so I can show you without buying a bunch of tools, but I think for this one, I might not have a choice. Now, this is uh, it's a bearing puller. It's for bigger bearings, but I just bought it just to get these off now you don't need to buy this I can link it on the bottom anyway um, I doubt you want to buy it but I'm gonna clamp it on there These all go in like that. See how it works? This is all for a bigger bearing, but. Okay. It's like an alien movie. Can't see what I'm doing, but. And just check it to see if it's coming off and not just bending it. Yeah, it's coming off. Now on yours, you might be able to bang it off. But because this is pretty rare, what I'm doing here, normally they can come off. But lately I've been breaking a lot of them, so for this video I'm doing this. 
I didn't want to break it right in the middle of doing the video. And we should hear a pop here soon. There we go. So that's off the bearing. So we got that off and I messed up. See the, I bent that right out of the way. I'm surprised I never break this, but you got to make sure it's out of the way. Like here, I guess I moved back like that and then I caught the bearing. But you're supposed to turn it where it's not touching. So clean all this up. So when you put it back on, so this here, you don't really need it. It's kind of like an added little thing, but um, I'm just going to take it off. But if you have it, just put it back on. So next we're going to get this bearing off. Some pumps, I'm just showing you the one, this is the Beachcomber, but you want to check anyway. Because yours might be a little different. Beachcomber has a tendency of using one pump and then using another different pump. Or you might have a Beachcomber tub and maybe another service guy changed the pump. So you always want to check to see the bearing. See if there's a C-clip in the middle here. Now, I I know that these pumps do not have, like, it's a little tiny C-clip that goes in the groove. Just make sure it's not in there. But I know this one doesn't have it. It just holds the bearing, because when you do this and you're trying to pull it out, that little C-clip that's sitting in this little groove, and it's hard to see, it will, hold, it will hold it there and it will break the bearing. So you want to make sure your pump doesn't have that little tiny C-clip. Now I'll link these pullers down on the on in the description there. These are pretty cheap, but if you have a hot tub and you intend to have it for a long time, it's good to have these tools. Because you will. If you balance your water right, then you may not have a problem with this. Try to center that. It centered. So what I do for this is I get smaller vice grips or needle nose vice grips, get it up here, just hold it up as high as I can as the bearing is coming out. It's just something to grab onto instead of trying to grab here. There's a little bit of room because this this threaded bolt's going to hit here. So I want to get it going so I can get good grip on it. As you're doing this, you'll start cleaning off the shaft all the way up. Here we just ran into that.
shaft's pretty worn down. So clean up, clean up all this as best you can. You see it's all worn down. This is supposed to be the same. Now if you're looking for another bearing like this, all information's right on it. Now this one here is blank. Yeah, it'd be, on, it'd be stamped on both sides, but normally you'll have the number right on there. There's nothing. But we have a video, and I'll link it down below, how to measure a bearing. So here's the new bearing. Okay, we're going to put that on. So we're going to bang that in, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So what I use is I use long sockets, enough that it's going to go through and we want to catch that inner ring. If we go on the outside too much, it'll crush it right in and we got to change the bearing again. So we want to stay close, even when we're banging it in, we want to stay close on the inside. See, it's pretty close and it can go straight through without the... And you gotta be careful when you're banging this that when this starts coming out, you're not banging the top of this and re-threading it. Okay, so when you get the bearing on, yeah, that shaft's pretty bad. So you gotta keep an eye on if it's ever like that. Make sure it's straight before you put anything back together. And um, you really gotta keep an eye on it. Do that yearly um, check over of your hot tub. See if your seals are leaking. Because it's the seal that's leaking that wrecks the pump. So if you want this to last longer, just keep an eye on it. For a leak. We're gonna put everything back. And like I said, we're gonna put some grease on the end. It's all cleaned up. And that helps with moisture. You put, try to put this one in first before you put the grease. Try to get in there. Then we're going to use that socket. We're going to try to use that socket. Bang it in. There you go. So it's level. It's going to be level with the bottom of the bearing there. Next, we're going to next we're going to slip this in. And that's the reason why I like to keep these pins in in the back. Keep them in. So we're going to line everything all back up. Push it right in. Make sure all the pins go around. Go in. Okay, all four pins are in. It's good. Sometimes you have to bang this in. We're going to use the when we screw these together. Okay, we still got to do the seal. So we're going to pop that out. So we're going to clean this all up. Clean all that up. And then the screwdriver, we're going to hit this seal right here, bang it out. seal clean this all up so we got the new seal we put some silicone let's put a bead all around just want to get underneath that groove okay gonna get some underneath that groove Slip it in there, push it down. Use a slotted screwdriver on an angle and just kind of bang it in there all the way down. On one side, on the other, on the other side, You're just rocking it in there and you'll feel that solid. It's 
I'll squirt it out. Just make sure that you don't have to clean everything up here because it will squeeze out here too. We're good, we're not, we don't have to clean anything out. Okay, so if you still remember how yours went to back together, then start putting it back together. So this part first. And when you're screwing them in, just screw them in a bit. Just get all of them caught first, because you're gonna have to move it around. This wet head, you're gonna move it around and so make sure you get all of them caught first before you start screwing them in. This one here, I'm having a hard time screwing it in. Okay, I caught that one. And that starts sucking in right there. So you go one tight one side, just it's snug. You don't have to over tighten it. Just snug. Snug. New impeller. That's the old one. And we're gonna put the seal in. This one is a five horsepower, but it's gonna fit. That's the one I have. <laughs> so Try to get the force horsepower, try to get the same one, okay? But for this video, I didn't have a four horsepower. I have a five horsepower, but I'm gonna put the five in. It seals already in. If you have to replace it, then yet this type here is really hard to do. Best thing to do is try to heat it up a bit. The, the like warm, warm water, like boil some water and stick this in the water. So the rubber is a little bit softer, so you can get like a maybe a knife or something like that in there, like a hard knife. I'm just trying to pierce that rubber. So again, we're gonna hold the back and then twist the bearing on her. Okay, hold the back with the screwdriver. We're gonna screw that in. As soon as I can get the hold of the back. There you go. Okay, since we got that in, make sure you put that back, the plastic piece, or this one's metal, put it in the back of the pump. Don't forget your little hat thing. Remember how that goes back together? Mine, the nipple the aerator hose goes on the bottom. Now if you forget, then there's little marks here. See the little groove right there? Then you look inside here, there's another one right here, right where the discharge is. Just line that up. And it's the closest one. Even if you're a little off, you go, oh, okay, that's the closest one. You just turn it. Push it together and make sure it lines up the screw holes. Push together. Now sometimes it's hard to push together. So what you do is just put a screw in one way, the one side, just put a screw in here, go on the bottom and then kind of go like this. You're gonna do that anyway, but you just go back and forth and screw them in. Now when you put these screws in, don't use a you can take it. You can use a drill to take them off, but you got to be really careful putting them in. So what I would suggest is put them in a little bit, but don't tighten them with it. The reason for that is because I don't want you to crack this. So what I do is I hand tighten it so I can feel it. Get a little tweak, okay? And you go around and you put those in the same way. Use the drill to put it in but don't fully seat it in. Okay, just grab with that, tighten it. There you go. Now, if this video helped you out, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to us, and we'll see you on the next one.